Después, tenía como 30 años, hubo oso aluvión. Ahora, no vino aluvión, vino barrubión. There was a massive landslide that came in and killed many people. 400 people still have not yet been found. What I didn't know was that much of the mud came from a collection of mud and tailings that had been produced by a mine that was upriver from this town. And most of the mud that came down was a consequence of that mining. Para mí, de verdad, de que aquí no se ha invertido en seguridad. El Ministerio de Minería aquí, el chileno, nunca ha, le ha puesto atajo a todos los relaves que, que, de las mineras. We have the example of many mines that they are pumping water without permission and then they have to pay not that much if you compare with the money they earn. No? I think uh, they have the, the money to do something better. A huge amount of this incredibly pristine environment is taken up by mining for the minerals that go into our mobile phones and our computers and our cameras that go into our electronic devices that are things that we nowadays rely on 110%. When they start this project, they pump from 15, 16 meters. Now they are pumping over 32 meters deep. And that is because on the back of those hills starts to work a mine, a salt mine. And then this salt mine uses a lot of water in the process. A lot of water. What makes me sad is the way we go about getting our minerals, the way we don't understand where our stuff comes from, the way we can't make smart commercial consumer decisions because we just don't know and we're not aware of it. When I started this, I didn't realise how big a problem it is or how with very small interventions and behavior change, actually we could make a big difference. Entonces yo me, me retiré del mar y un día leyendo el Rear Liar, vi los locos de las nubes, que en el 82 en el Tofo pusieron a trapaniebla en los cerros altos, del, a 800 metros de altura allá en el Tofo. Entonces eso me causó eh, gran... Eh, me impacto en mi persona porque yo cuando de chico vi la niebla y no pensaba que tenía tanta agua. Entonces vine y puse en práctica esto acá en Falda Verde. ¿Y qué es lo que pretendemos nosotros? Nosotros pretendemos que con esta producción de agua hacer prestaciones de servicio y ser sustentable. Vamos a poner lechuga, peces, tomate, de todo, con esta agua. Somos productores de agua del 2000. Vino la embajadora de Australia para acá ayudando a nosotros. The very first step is understanding that we have a problem. The second is understanding that we're connected to it through our purchasing decisions. Then it becomes about how can we actually change our purchasing decisions to reward companies that are using water sustainably. We are a smart community of millennials. We're information savvy. We can find information when we want to find it. And once we find it, we can tell our friends and we can share this information online and we can create a community of people who understand the importance of saving water. El mensaje que doy, que tengamos conciencia con el agua, porque sin agua no hay vida. Sin agua no hay nada.